dream. Welcome to the MIB Podcast, where we help you chase your dreams side by side. And now, your hosts, Mike and Talia Osborne. What's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, everybody. It's Mike and Talia. This is the MIB Podcast. Married and in business. Married and in business. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a great day. This is episode number 14. Married and the dream building interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, we're new to this. So. But yeah, this is going to be really fun because me and Talia are actually going to interview each other. We don't know what the answers to the questions we are, but it's all going to be about dream building and lifestyle and homes and security, the things that are all important to everybody <laughs> if, you, if you have kids and family this stuff is important to you and it needs to be important to you because you need these goals to go after but and more importantly you need to know what your spouse wants so you can get it for them yep and we are freestyling so freestyling. You, <laughs> she we, called it free balling first no sh- you're not supposed <laughs> to tell people but that free balling, it's free oh my gosh okay so very embarrassed right now but before i forget let me just remind you to follow us on facebook if you haven't already um facebook.com slash mib podcast uh check out our website the mib podcast.com and you can send us an email at info at the mib podcast.com hey we, we really appreciate you guys giving us new reviews and things like that we really want to know how you guys are liking the show and uh make sure you check out the last couple episodes we didn't bring it up in the last episode but um episode 12 was a very powerful very good <laughs> episode about no excuses. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. yeah, and it kind of gives you from our perspective of having uh, four kids, four girls at that. Let me add that, right? Four <laughs> girls. Uh, you know, Being I, married, I'm working a contract busy. job where blah, 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 blah. And, you know, 50 something, six days a week. I second shift. Uh, Ty runs a full time business. We're expanding into multiple other businesses as we speak. And no excuses, right? Episode 12. Check it out. There's a ton of value there. You're going to hear uh, a lot of um, excuses that things are, you know, that are like, you know, big deals to you are actually the reason why you should be doing things. And I hate when people tell me that, like, oh, oh you should be doing this because of that. Well, shut your mouth. But okay, I agree <laughs> with you, right? Uh, episode 13, what was that about, right? Uh, married and millionaire stalking and hacking. So we kind of talked about how you learn uh, from pe- other people's success. So success leaves clues. You want to follow what they're doing, model, 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 no copying. <laughs> so listen to that. We explain it in great detail. Yeah. Just checking out, uh, go follow the people that you are really interested in, uh, what they're doing, how they pursue it. Um, a way that I always heard about it was if I can do a half of what any man does, right? <clears throat> if you put, um, uh, what, Hussein, uh, Hussein Bolt, I'm sure I'm butchering his name, <laughs> uh, world fastest man, you put him on the hundred, you know, hundred yards back, you put me on the 50, I can beat him, right? That's <laughs> yeah. the whole point. So, and I'm not in good shape, but that's the whole point of everything. If you can do half of what any man can do, then you can have half of whatever they have. Um, woman too, I'm saying that's not gender uh, specific, but literally that's the way you should look at things in life. If this guy can do it, I can do it too. Cause I can do, if not, I can do half of whatever he can do and things like that. So Especially if they're giving you the blueprint, telling you everything that they're doing, all the marketing, all the stuff's out there. You just have to go out there and hack it. So same thing. Today's about dream building, and it's going to be a, like I said, a freestyling episode. And it's going to be an interview between us, a fact-finding interview between a married couple that's been married for almost 12 years in July. And with all the kids and the moving and the, oh gosh. Life changes. We've gone through it all. (laughs) Yes, we have. And now we're professional podcasters. <laughs> Free ball. No. Stop. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're going to edit that out. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start with you since you want to keep bringing that up. All right. I would like to know um, what type of lifestyle you would like to have for our future. What defines freedom was the question pretty much. So that's real simple to me. Debt free have no debt. Oh, no man, anything. And uh, we have made a very big stride to getting there. And we're happy to say that we are getting closer. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, everything. I mean, I I want a house paid for. Uh, Doesn't have to be a dream home. It has to be a house where it it fits all of us comfortably. 
you know, we have a vehicle that's paid for, um, that fits us comfortably with the six <laughs> people in our yeah. family. Uh, and we have the freedom and the time to do kind of what we want to do. And that's always been something that's important to both of us. It's just, if we need to spend time at the soccer field, the softball field, uh, with grandparents, with Talia has two grandparents that are still alive. That's very imp- a great, well, I guess, I mean, her grandmothers are still alive. And uh, that's important to us for them to spend time with them. So having the freedom to do that. So freedom basically sums up into time for you? Yeah, it's always uh, money and time. Money buys time, really. The more money you have, the more successful your business is. The more um, four-hour work week, like Tim Ferriss says, you know, if you can take what you're good at, focus your efforts at that, and get and help other people. I know it's not really that thing, but it is to me. Figure out what we can do and just maximize it to the fullest to be able to have as much free time as we need. To, I mean, let's be honest, it's going to be for, to pursue other business avenues, but it is going to be to have the option to not work if we don't want to. Okay. Not uh, retire, not, you know, no. golf well, shorts. We have too many ideas to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, so my shirt covered my belly, I mean, my uh, golf shorts covering my belly button. <laughs> All right. Um, so tell me about your. D- oh, no, no, no. What? what? What is freedom to you? Oh, I thought we were going to go down the no, list. No, we're going to, you oh. have to answer the question. Oh, it's fact finding so we can figure out what we both want for each other. I know. I just, so I got to figure out okay. what the dragon is so I can slay the dragon for you. Okay, honey. Uh, I'm going to slay your dragon too, though. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Smoopy. All right. So um, for me, lifestyle and freedom is, I mean, it's very similar to Mike's, but um, I really just want to not have a care in the world, to not have to worry if something dramatic or drastic happens. I want to be able to afford to take care of whatever that is. If, you know, my girls want to go, like I was in show choir in high school. So singing, dancing, yeah, really cheesy, but it was amazing. We were great. (laughs) Um, So, but like if my kids had to go on a trip for something like that, I want to be able to have the dough to put out to, so that they can do that without having to worry that they might not be able to do it. Um, I want time to be able to go and just enjoy things in life. Like, going to another country, experiencing different culture, things like that. Um, A really big one for me is I want a maid. (laughs) Oh. So, and I say that because two of the worst things on this planet are named dishes and laundry. (laughs) Especially when you have six people in your family. Oh, the curse words. Yes. So if I could have someone to do my dishes and my laundry because they're the two things that are never ending and everything else I can get the kids to do or I can do, but dishes and laundry. It's like, I I, I don't know why we have them. Can we just all be naked and eat off the floor? I don't know. I just don't (laughs) want to do them. (laughs) Indian style, naked on the floor, eating (laughs) Eating food. Um, Clean floor. So yes, people, I want to make, and it's not because I'm lazy. I'm just super busy and I don't, have the time or the mental energy to put into it. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> go ahead and grab a drink of water. We're going to, I'm going to get the next one for you, but, All right. and I, I couldn't agree more. And that is something, and same thing. It's just trying to make, we try to buy, I think a lot of people use the term right now, biohack. We're trying to biohack our life, right? We have an Amazon business that used to take us every day. We try to biohack it so we can knock out 14 days worth of work or whatever in a three day period. So we're trying to, make it the most efficient way to get the same things done, right? Mm -hmm. How to get the result without working so many hours or so many days. And I'd rather, I mean, just me and Talia, we'd rather work two or three 14 hour days and then have several days off, you know? And I think that's, um, that's very important. And uh, definitely dishes. I mean, we, all this stuff is a pain in the butt. It really (laughs) is. Even if you have a dishwasher and uh, things like that, it's, I mean, with four kids, this is funny because we don't even use real plates or silverware. <laughs> we have biohacked our life down to paper plates and all that. And that's a tip for you guys right there. You get all, That's what you need out of the episode. Go buy paper plates and craps. That way you don't have to do dishes. Saves you a lot of time. As much. But yeah, still we still got pots and pans and yeah. like said, four uh, Someone could create a plastic, <laughs> a plastic <laughs> pot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that you could just throw away. That you could just throw away that doesn't melt. That would oh, be amazing. There you go. Million dollar idea. Okay. <laughs> Worth the episode, right? 
All right, we're, Ty is going to have to answer the first, next one. Uh, the home. What is important to you when it comes to um, a home, a dream, well, dream building? What is your perfect home? All right. Perfect home. Everyone has their own bedroom, so that's pretty large. Um, that's five bedrooms. Yes, five bedrooms. What about guest room? And Well, let me get there. <laughs> okay. Everyone has their own room. I would like a finished basement that has a in-law suite or the in-law suite could be above the garage, but I would like it to be like a beautiful, like huge room with a walk-in closet and a big bathtub for my guests. Um, and my bedroom, bathroom, closet need to be, no, the bedroom doesn't need to be too big, but the closet needs to be decent size because we have a lot of clothes. And then the bathroom must have a big soaking tub. Big. Big. So. Bubbles? Jets? Uh, I don't need jets. I don't need jets. I just need a big tub because I'm a tall person. <laughs> and so the worst thing in the world is to get in a bathtub and your knees are sticking out of the water. Yeah. So just so you know, that's what I want. All right. So then yard, I would like a large yard. Part, uh, part of it can be fenced in. So, cause our dog, we, I just want him to be able to go out by himself and then, um, we can go outside and play with him and stuff like that. But I also want a big garden. Like, and when we lived in Florida, we had tons of stuff. We had pineapple trees, pomegranate trees, uh, uh orange bushes, orange trees, lemon bushes. Um, what else do we have? We honey? Pears, peaches, yeah. tomatoes. Yes. All that. Um, banana, blueberry, bananas, grapes, papaya. Yeah. So we guava. had all of that and I would really love to recreate that again. Can't do that here in Maine. Kind of sucks. Too cold. No. But <laughs> um, maybe a greenhouse would be really nice to have on the property. Um, <clears throat> and then I would like dream home. So I want water access with blue crab. <laughs> blue crab. <laughs> Things that are important. Blue crab. Very important to me. Um, and what else a garage would be great and that's basically it like it doesn't i don't know if that's a lot of stuff but it doesn't take much to make me happy i don't think i mean you could really put that all into a uh, the problem i think would be that you know finding the land but you could probably get it pretty cheap when it comes well i mean it's not like a million dollar idea right it really is it's not that big and I think that's kind of where we came from. We've upgraded houses a few times during our life together. And we've been actually, you know, where we got to a point where space was too much. We actually had too much space and we're like, yep. dang on, we need to, you know, downsize a thousand square feet because it's just too much to clean. So yep. I can agree with you there. All right, honey, your turn. What's your <clears throat> dream home look like? This is kind of a trick question to me because I want multiple homes. And same thing, I'm not, you don't think, oh man, this guy's just trying to talk about a lot of money. And no, I just want to have options for me and my family to enjoy. Not my, just me. You know, we have two loving parents still that my parents, her parents, everybody's still great health. And they're actually very young. We're only 20 years apart from my parents. So uh, everybody's really young. I want to make a lot of memories, as many memories as we can. So that could be uh, mean multiple houses. So I'd really love to have Obviously, our house, same thing with Taya wants, really. I'd love to have a big piece of land. Uh, the gardening, it's very important to me. I still have a banana tree and a papaya tree that are really struggling to stay alive upstairs in our house here in Maine. Um, but yeah, they basically the exact same. We've always agreed upon that. Uh, we want acreage. We want a lot of space. Um, it doesn't have to be on the water, but you know that would be nice, too. Blue crab. Yeah, I know, but we can get a boat. Uh, Blue crab. <laughs> That, if you didn't know, that's our favorite food on the planet is blue crab, which you can get from, I guess, the Chesapeake Bay, where we're, uh, Virginia, where we're from, or uh, a lot of places down south. Um, other homes, though, like here, we've been to Maine a few times uh, when I work these different contracts here uh, doing electrical design work, and we love it here. Yeah. We'd love to have a vacation home here because it's really, I, I'm telling you this like a best friend, there is no place better to spend a um, summer than here in Maine, the weather is absolutely perfect. It really is. I mean, the weather is 75, 80 degrees every day. You know, at night, you, it's a little bit chilly. And not chilly, it just feels good. And it's a really good place to live um, during summertime. Uh, winter is brutal, but if you're into that, and that's what, you know, that's a good thing for you too. Um, I'd love a house in Florida. My brother lives there, family lives there. I'd love 
Disney. I'd loved living there for two years. And I'd love to have a little vacation home there. And that, and these are all income uh, properties as well. You know, we uh, summer homes here in Maine ran out for a lot of money. Uh, homes in Florida during the summer, well, year round year ran round, out for yeah. a lot of money. And none of them are greatly expensive. I'm talking, you know, a couple, uh, you know, maybe $150,000 for a little house here. Something mm -hmm. just that fits our needs during, you know, a month in the summertime. Right. And then we rent it out during, out when we're not there. So, uh, same thing with Florida. A couple thousand square foot, what? Pool home it could cost, uh, you like know, two hundred. Hundred. I mean, for a smaller one, one hundred fifty, hundred eighty thousand dollars. Yeah. In Florida right now, where we used to live in Claremont, Florida, which is right next to Disney. Um, yeah, that's perfect life. I, I haven't experienced the mountain living enough to really say that, but I think that it would be great to have a cottage in the mountain too. And these are all income properties. We would literally we would live in Virginia the whole time. We live in our regular home, but these are places that we can rent out or vacation there as uh, just fun thing to do. So that is my answer for homes. Okay. Um, so back to you again, oh. uh -huh. um, vacations, <clears throat> where, where would you like to go? What's an ideal location or a couple of places that you definitely, definitely, definitely want to go. All right. So, I mean, my thing is my go-to is Cancun. We've gone there <laughs> five times. <laughs> And we've had a blast every time. I've been there two times as a single dumb person and <laughs> three times with Talia and we've been to Cabo and we love Mexico and it's very inexpensive. Well, I mean, a based off anything else is very inexpensive, right. way cheaper than doing Disney or anything like that. It's always um, all inclusive. So I love, love, love that. I, I'm addicted to blue water. I love going in the water and knowing that you're not going to step on a crab or a broken <laughs> bottle or jellyfish or jellyfish. <laughs> And, you know, and the weather and the atmosphere, the first class, you know, dining, uh, that's just, that's my ideal vacation. Uh, to, to, I guess something that we haven't done before, um, definitely be Hawaii. We still have not done Hawaii. And uh, definitely one thing I want to do is a place called Peter Island in the uh, British Virgin Islands. When we were part of a um, MLM back in the day, a multi-level marketing company, they owned the Peter Island and they, this was a place that was like nothing else. A street, uh, had streets with no names type <laughs> thing. And it, they just, they built this place up because you went there every year if you were, you know, Qualified. top, yeah, top level qualification. And it always, you know, pulled me and tell you to say, that's what we want to do. We want to ride the helicopter from St. Thomas. We want to get to, you know, land there, do the hug, knowing that we have accomplished something great. And I still plan on doing that, not in that business not even close, but doing that as a family together, because that is the memory that we wanted to make years ago. We decided that we wanted to go there. So I plan on going there with you. That's awesome, honey. What about you? What's your, what vacation? What do, what do you want to do about vacation? So ever since we've watched Couples Retreat. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Couples Retreat. That's a great movie, by the way. Funny. But ever since we've watched that, I've wanted to go to Bora Bora. Ooh. Amazing, beautiful water huts right there in the water uh it just seems surreal to me so that's a place i definitely want to go but i really want to go to japan <clears throat> i would love <laughs> micah's part japanese quarter and um you know i just i like that culture and i would just like to go and experience it firsthand and you know maybe even meet some of mike's distant distant relatives and I'm sure I got um hundreds of <laughs> Thousands. But that is something I really would love to do. And okay, Australia. I really want to go to Australia. I want to like hug a kangaroo or something. Oh, those things are pretty mean looking. I, I know. It might punch me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I might grab you like a dog, though. <laughs> oh, stop it. Yeah, so vacationing. Stop. All right. So you think so? That's, that's it, huh? I mean, there's lots of other places I want to go, but those Fine. are Japan. Those yeah. are top so of the list. About Japan and I want to go to Japan. I think it'd be cool, but I mean, I can speak a little bit of Spanish. <laughs> you I mean, can learn hey, Japanese. How are you doing, cousin? I have no clue who you are, <laughs> but I really like you and thank you. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> All right, so cars. And I will just preface this with saying this is more Mike's deal than mine. No, no, no. It's your question anyway first, right? So cars. What is what is your car that you'd be happy with? Or I don't even know a name of the car. Exactly. Okay. That's why I said. What? Okay. You got to pick one for yourself, one uh, and uh, one for yourself. You, uh, just you. So no one else has to be in a car with you. Okay. Or me, with me and you. Okay. And then family. 
All right. So I am very simple and a car that I would like is a Lexus convertible um, car. (laughs) (laughs) So something that's Lexus, something that's convertible. Like an SC430, like an older one. Yeah. Something like that. I haven't seen their new stuff. So, you know, we'll, when we get there. We sat in a, I think an IS350. Yeah. And you love that. Yeah, the convertible. I think they only made it one year. Yeah. So you see how hard that is. You have to remember all these letters and numbers to know which car it is. I just say Lexus convertible. That's for me and Mike to drive around in. Yeah. And, and why Lexus though? I think it's just really comfortable. It's really smooth. Um, it's a quality car. So it's that's quiet, right? And it's quiet. You yeah. Remember our? I mean, I had a a ninety two Lexus that had two hundred fifty thousand miles on it, but this thing drove like unbelievable probably smoother than any car i've ever driven to this day and this one had like a quadrillion miles on it, remember yeah and she loved it she acted like she didn't love driving that car i did i ended up loving it yeah. okay so then the family car i believe i want a pearl um yeah, pearl white pearl white suv which i think it's a is it a lincoln or is it the um Cavalier. What Cavalier. <laughs> Not close. Cavalier. What is it? What's my one, honey? Escalade. Escalade. Cadillac. Pearl. Yes, Cadillac Escalade. And I want a you know backup camera and TVs for the kids. So and yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing like too fancy. I think that's yeah. Got to have three rows though. Got to. Yeah, we have to have three rows and a massive trunk. The trunk is very important because we have no trunk right now, which drives us nuts. So that's it. Yeah. Um, for you, honey. For me. Uh, for the family car, um, same thing. It has to be. I, you know, to be honest, I would love to have a four. I, they don't make them anymore, but a four excursion, seven point oh big diesel engine, biggest car they got, right? Um, one of those, um, mainly because they get decent gas mileage. It is diesel, but twenty miles a gallon on the highway, which most of the driving we do. Uh, or anything, uh, suburban Escalade, something that it doesn't have to be, and we're not talking about new. I don't think me and Ty will ever, ever buy a new car. We'll buy something that's used and we'll pay cash for it. But yeah, something that fits the entire family. And then hopefully at least, I mean, we're trying to get two bench. I want bench seats in the back. That way it's eight seater, right? So we mm-hmm. need to be able to take your family places too. Um, that way, well, I mean, my family, your family can ride with us for me. That's a very hard question because I've been debating this for years because I'm going to get my dream car here soon. But um, the same thing, kind of, I'm kind of simple. Um, dream car, I'd like to have a, it sounds simple, but a Lotus Esprit. They can, you can buy those for 30 grand, something like that used. Obviously, they don't really make them anymore. Um, but same car that Richard Gere drove in Pretty Woman <laughs> to pick up Julia Roberts, uh, the, the silver one. I want uh, probably the newer model, but the exact same look. And yeah. Either that or a DeLorean. <laughs> Saying to everybody, oh, Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Nah, how about a, like an 82 DeLorean? You know? <laughs> got a flux capacitor in the back. I got my hoverboard in the passenger seat. That's. Me. I thought I was going to be in the passenger seat. No, you're going to be holding it. Well, I mean, it's a pink hoverboard. so I mean, Okay, I can, can hold it. it. But yeah, I, that's the type of stuff I want. You yeah. know, it, it's something that nostalgic brings back such good memories. I love Back to the Future. And that to me is cool. That shows that you just really want to enjoy whatever you have. Yeah. So I like it. All right. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, I know you guys are hearing us talk about material things and whatever, but you know what? It gives you something physical to go after. Um, But we are not all about ourselves. We are not um, solely focused on us and our family. We actually have a lot of goals that include other people. So, honey, who, what are some goals and who are some people that you would like to be a blessing to um, who are in our family? Oh, okay, like fa- financial stuff. I mean, if money was an option, I'd like to be just there as an asset, right? You have a very big family in Kentucky. I'd love to be open or available to help them in which, whichever way they need to. Uh, we've talked about uh, you know, doing simple things like going to your grandmother's house and I'm trying not to be too personal, but you know, putting down new flooring and, you know, just a coat of paint just to make it comfortable for where she's living. Right. Yeah. I think, I feel like a little tiny upgrade, it just brings out, a, you know, fuel for your spirit. Yeah. It'll make me feel good. So yeah. maybe selfish. I just want to 
feel good about helping your family. Um, my family too. I, I would like to, in that specific about the house, you know, I'd love to have the in-law suites available. If my parents want to come move in with us or her parents, uh, I want to have that option to go ahead and do that. And um, my nieces and nephew, if money wasn't an option, I'd love to take the, uh, it's not a burden because my family does really, uh, they're very uh, smart with money, but I'd love to be able to pay for college if they needed me too. And the same thing with our kids, obviously as well, but uh, that's multimillionaire if you had to put four kids through college. <laughs> you know, See so, why we have so many ideas, yes, four kids in yeah, college. Simple yeah. things like that. I mean, it's, <laughs> Helping, I guess you said, in our immediate family, that's kind of, you know, I want to be able to help which any way I can, uh, whether that's uh, financially with a business idea, with uh, helping them uh, start the business, make it successful, whatever they need. That's what's important to me. So what, uh, what are you thinking? Um, so for me, I know both of our parents have worked really hard um, to provide for us when we were kids. And so it's always been important to me to be able to do the same for them. So, you know, they're older, they're not too much older, but we would really like, I would really like to be able to just sneak in their house one day, grab a bunch of bills and just go pay them all off for the year or more, you know, and then they wonder, well, why is my bill say it's already been paid? And, you know, just not even tell them, or I would like to just leave money around their house. Like they open their sock drawer and there's like a roll of hundreds. <laughs> I think to me, that would be cool because I think that's something that it, it would be a different experience for them. To, it's like Easter egg hunting. Yeah. In your sock drawer. <laughs> um, but, you know, just making sure that everything they need or could want is taken care of and that they can continue to do whatever makes them happy, but that financially they're taken care of. and. And then the other really big thing is that our kids have the time to spend with their grandparents as much time as either one of them wants. So, yeah, I think that's very important to both of us. So, um, not learning too much new stuff yet. I'm surprised. I'm not getting any new facts. I guess <laughs> maybe I'm a great husband. I, I know really <laughs> about you. But giving back, though. How about that? We're talking about giving back to the community. Uh, we'll, we'll include charities in this, things like that. What's something that you've always wanted to do? Um, that you want to hopefully do maybe something name something very close immediately and then something um, like a dream of something you want to do to give back something immediate so something that you know is really close to my heart is just the the churches that have had an influence in my life um, being able to we believe in tithing so you know, being able to give above that to support any causes um, within some of the churches that we've been involved in, um, missions trips, things like that. I would actually like to go on a missions trip. Um, I'm not sure where to, but I'd like to go on a missions trip and be able to give to people who are less fortunate or who, who've been involved in the disaster, things like that. Just give my time and you know really just be a blessing and supply whatever we can supply at the time i think that would be really really cool and i think it would be a really good experience for the kids too to be able to see a different way of life yeah <clears throat> so that's more immediate um a more distant one is i think i've told you about this before but i would love to start a foundation um that anchors in people in the community who are successful at a certain skill or trade or um, something like that, who would mentor teenage kids, um, maybe who do not have the, the parental backing or the money to be able to pursue their dreams. So if you can connect those people, um, it would benefit the business owner because they would be able to have an extra pair of hands to help them, but it would benefit the kid because they would have a mentor that they can learn and grow from. And then when they come out of high school, they don't have to worry about where they're going to go or what they're going to do because they'll have um, those goals set and they'll have a, a way of getting there rather than being stuck in a situation that they have no control over. Mm -hmm. So that's something I would like to do a big goal. Yeah. I think I've kind of talked about that with you in the past about what, you know, creating some type of entrepreneur type scholarship fund for, uh, kids that are in college or in high school that can't go to college, can't afford it. Um, 
maybe they have to do advanced level. I mean, just, I mean, good grades, whatever. They get into a class, they get a scholarship reward to them that they have a budget of so many thousands of dollars to start their own company at a certain age. And maybe different people like me or, um, or you, obviously, and then uh, different entrepreneurs can go in, volunteer their time to mentor these kids, just show them how to have a, you know, small, successful business right out of the gate. Yep. Right. So you teach them hard work and mentorship and all things are important. So that would be, that's a great idea. And then um, I guess for me, it would be something immediate. We've talked about it for years. We've done this several times as we uh, adopt a family. Um, last year, we were, we were able to do it. Um, that, and families in need for Christmas and we buy them Christmas gifts and things like that. And that's always important to me. Um, being able to, and I, I, I think that, you know, this is something we should do when you're debt free. But, uh, you know, be generous even more so when you're out to eat, things like that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think there's anything you probably feel too much better than, you know, talking to somebody, finding a waitress, or whatever, giving them a $100 bill um, for a tip on a, you know, a $20 salad. <laughs> and just, you know, somebody's in need, they do a good job, they work hard, they deserve it. I think that's always been something very cool for, you know, just cool for us to do or you to do or me to do. Um, but yeah, definitely the Christmas thing. I, I always, always enjoy giving for Christmas. Um, I never asked for anything. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, I love giving. And yeah, long term, you know, something that I think a lot of people do, like they build schools in different third world countries and everything like that. I think that's really cool. I think something local. Um, I think everybody's doing a great job doing that. I think something more local, though, finding some a a really good need in the community. Yep. Um, and I, and I hope that, you know, gain these roots somewhere where we can really help out our community somewhat. Right. And, uh, give back, um, maybe for a, like after school program or, um, an athletic center or something like that, where people have somewhere to go, somewhere yeah. safe to go somewhere. Um, you know, obviously just safe, safe to go, but also, um, emotionally safe, helping people, uh, having people there that are counselors, that are good people, that can help uh, guide people through problems. Especially, I see all this garbage event in high school, people getting bullied and this and that. I, I want everybody to go somewhere where people, it's just, they're just surrounded by love. They can just be kids. Right. Yeah. And just, yeah, but they just see the love of everybody else. Yeah. I, mean, I heard someone say this recently, but literally the answer to almost every problem in the world is love. You know, you just, you can give love back or give love to somebody else that needs it. Um, the hand up, not a handout. I think that that's a great way to really in just increase the, or decrease the hate in the world. So, yeah. I like that. Um, I think why don't we, why don't we skip down to, okay, what do we want for our kids? And we'll, uh, we'll exit out of here. Okay. Um, so for my kids, um, I just hope that I can be a good parent to them, you know, that I can teach them about respect and not just, you know, self-respect, but respecting other people. Um, but, you know, as they grow, I want them to, I hope they have a hunger for, for, for success, you know, whether it's athletic or it's in business or it's in school. I hope they gain that from us, um, from watching us chase, chase things like we're doing now. Um, but, you know, I want to be able to provide money for them to be able to go to college if they want or start a business if they want. And, you know, I think that's important that they have that choice and that it's not you have to go to college or you you know have to start a business. But having that choice for them, I think, would be a really cool option. So um, and I want them to be able to pursue the things that make them happy. Like Chase has been begging, begging, begging to do ballet. <laughs> And so she watched that movie leap and now she's all about it. Um, and so we'll see what we can do to make that happen. But she also wants to play lacrosse. So that's, <laughs> that's the kind of kids we have. They're very diverse, um, not just in culture, but <laughs> in the things they want to do. So, um, you know, I just want them to have a, a good, safe upbringing and, you know, be people who can give back like we want to do, you know, teach them all the things that, we're trying to learn ourselves now. So yeah. What about we, you? We really do have great kids and I, I kind of, I am the pushover. I am the one. <laughs> if I, if hey, I'm going to run to the gas station real quick, they, they're the ones that pile in the car with me because they know I'm going to buy them a chocolate bar, and <laughs> a bag of beef jerky and 
you know, I go there to get a, you know, <laughs> some lifesavers and I end up leaving 50 bucks later. <laughs> they really are good kids. But I think that what's important to me is that they're just taken care of. Um, getting the finances. Uh, so uh, and I said, I'm, this is not about being rich. This is about being secure, right? Yep. Being diversified where no matter what happens in Amazon or anything else that we are continually uh, have a flow of income coming in to take care of the family. And that's the security is more important to me than anything else. Uh, just knowing that finances are not a big deal. So if, I mean, if anybody thinks we've been talking about just money hungry, it's not about that at all. It's more about the peace of mind and the time that we get to spend with the family. And the um, memories we get the, to make. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm traditional. I mean, they say that the husband, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The uh, dad uh, is supposed to pay for the daughter's wedding. I don't know how I drew that lucky straw four <laughs> times, but that's something that's important to me. Now, I'm not doing, dealing with any bridezillas, but I mean, if they want to have a decent wedding, uh, you know, I, I would like to cover that, you know, honeymoon, things like that. That's important to me. Um, them knowing how to take care of themselves at a young age. Even now, the kids know how to do what we do in Amazon. Uh, and reselling and so they could literally we could probably put them in charge and they could run it for us probably very soon if we really wanted to show them how to do the inventory processing and all that but they help out they're really that good of kids and but I want them to be able to you know chase their dreams if they want to if they want to go after sports or this and that I want them to be able to do that and I think really what it comes down to is time and money you yeah. have to have you have to have the money to actually do the extra the all-star teams and the travel teams and this and that in sports and, or, you know, you know, nice violin costs thousands of dollars if they want to pursue that or a nice piano or, you know, be an artist classes for painting. These are all things that our kids have showed interest in. And we just want to make sure that we can devote the time necessary to be the basically chauffeur for these different things that they do. Plus make sure that uh, we have money to actually do that. So when you're handcuffed to a job, and this is the, you know, this is why uh, one of the hardest decisions when I had to go, when they offered me to come back and I make a lot of money to go be a contractor, but it was very hard to go back because we knew I was, be, I would be handcuffed from two o'clock in the afternoon to 12 o'clock at night. And that takes away all the time with the kids. And I hardly see them during the week, but we knew that sacrifices have to be made when the reward is big enough. Right. Right. So, and that's why we, uh, that's why I did what I did. And I did, we do, I do everything I can for the family. Yep. Um, and I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it at all, but, um, I don't enjoy the job. I definitely don't enjoy not seeing my family, but I know that there's a season for everything. And, uh, this is our season of just diversifying, uh, cementing our security and just uh, building a, uh, as many safety nets. We're like Spider-Man out there with, safety nets of income and things like that. And I think that's where uh, we're guided to be at this point. Yep. So that's what I want for our kids. I, I just want to make sure that I'm there for and be the best dad I can and that I am open and available to whatever they need. Yep. So, you know, you guys have heard our dreams, our goals uh, for the future. And we hope that you didn't just hear dollar signs and money, money, money. We hope that you heard our hearts, but also I hope that you can take, what we just did together and use it as a framework to do with your spouse or partner and just understand each other on a deeper level, what you guys want, who you want to help, who you want to support, how you want to live in the future. Because having that is a blueprint for your future. It gives you something to look forward to. So. Yeah, I think that this is very important. Let me tell you, know each other very well. Um, but I mean, I, I feel like there is a lot of people out there that have marriages not like ours where they don't talk as much. I mean, we talk all the time because we are literally run business together. We are literally married and in business, not, you know, Talia has a sewing company and I have a plumbing company. We are literally doing the exact same thing as a partnership all the time. So we have a unique relationship, I think, in that point. But I mean, we have plenty of family and friends and things that I feel like no one uses their listening skills very wise and they don't know the answers to these questions because they don't ask them or they talk too much. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that that's very important that you guys um, with your spouse, with your best friends, your business partners, just go, go do this exercise with them, figure out what they want. Um, and then line it up together, figure out a, um, 
you know, the mutual benefit or the, the partnership of the balance of what you guys want and get and work it out together. I mean, this is, this could save your marriage. If anything, it could give you something to fight for, or at least out loud speaking it, you're telling yourself and putting it out there that this is really what's important to me and be honest. Right. Yeah. It doesn't have to look anything like what we just described. It could be completely different. It could be that you want a thousand square foot home, you know, next to a bunch of neighbors because you want to be able to outreach to them. You know, it could be that you want to give away 90% of your income, like the owner of Chick-fil-A. So like there's all kinds of options. It's whatever your heart's desire is. So we want to encourage you go out there, figure out what your goal is, what your dreams are and chase those. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, MIB podcast, or sorry, facebook.com slash MIB podcast. Uh, go to our website, the MIB podcast.com. And you can also email us at info at the MIB podcast.com. Yeah. If you have any questions, please hit us up there. Um, hit us up on Facebook, show us some love. We'd love for you to review uh, some of our episodes, um, our podcast. We really hope that you guys are seeing our genuineness and our, you know, we're, we're Today, we even let you see a little bit of our heart. So we hope that you enjoyed it. Hope you got something from it. And uh, we, we're happy to see you next time. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Holla. Take care.